Let's go. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal episodes. Oh, bother. <laughs> I was going to think about telling you before we started 23 and 24. This is Sailor Moon. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 23 and 24. Background noise courtesy of the kitten. <laughs> okay, we are really getting into the meat of the battle portion of this arc. If we could just get past this point, because I really, really, really hate this whole Electra Complex thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Wow, man, you're just, you're going for it, aren't you? Of course, you're evil at this point, so you don't have that little conscience in the back of your head going, yeah, it's not right. I don't care if it's the past version of your father. It's kind of you know, genetic material, you know. Uh, but in this most recent episode, stuff is really starting to hit the fan, as it were. Mm -hmm. That's no moon. That's an evil villain. And let's not forget the pathos of Diamond attacking his own brother. Although I did notice a little comment there about... He never wore the black earrings before. The black malefic crystal earrings. And no, Sapphire never did. Interesting how they're taking this. Of course, I never really knew much about this particular arc. Because, one, I never read all the manga, even though I have, a, I have six volumes of it. And I watched the American version of it, which was an edit of the Japanese anime, which apparently has a lot of filler in it. Which I didn't realize until I started watching Crystal and reading the manga and went, Damn, man! Well, basically, the entire arc with Ali and Anne was put in so that the author could work on the Black Moon arc. It was another one of those instances of, oh, this manga's popular, let's make an anime. Uh-oh, we caught up with the author. Now what? And this is why Japan should adapt seasons. You know, you take a break for a little bit, and then you come back and there's more material. Yeah, at least for adaptations. That way you can continue to work from your source material. I heard some similar stuff happen with Roni Kenshin, that the anime actually has their own version of the ending compared to how the manga actually ended. Because they went straight past the author and didn't even bother to stop. <laughs> and then you have Inuyasha, which was the opposite. The anime got tired and went, okay, you can finish reading it in the manga. We're leaving. <laughs> and then the manga finished and they went, okay, well, we'll go back and animate the last couple of chapters. And I'm like, yeah, Inuyasha needs a Kai version. Someone do that, please. <laughs> All right, but back to Sailor Moon Crystal. Let's see, we have... Chibi Moon is evil, and she's also now been elevated above Prince Diamond. And so Diamond and Saphir are now servants. Oh yeah, they kind of get that whole, um, don't they like, get brainwashed or something there for a little bit? Yeah, well Saphir never wakes up from it, and Demande actually was never affected by it because the evil eye power that the wise man gave him shielded him. And then poor Saphir getting beast hands. I'm like, wait a minute, isn't that what Emerald had? And didn't Emerald die like two seconds later? Yeah, kind of a bummer for him because doesn't he kind of like get killed by his brother, so... Yeah, so very depressing. At least he gets an apology as a parting gift. <laughs> yes, but you see, that's the difference between the heroes and the villains. Even though Diamond regretted it, he still blew his brother away. Sailor Moon needs to stop Chibi Moon, but she's begging and pleading, and also surrendering the crystal because traditional heroes gambit give up your power because you're overpowered and then you still end up winning somehow anyways. Uh, also, Cute Kitty is apparently now the guardian of the door. Well, it's better than no one. Yeah, it's like, um, I'll protect this for you so you can go outside and hopefully kick ass. I'm rooting for you! Ah, I'm finally safe. <laughs> Though I did find that kind of interesting how the storm kind of calmed down once the planet was visible on Earth. Or I should say the moon or whatever that... Yeah, that's kind of one way to escalate a battle. No, really? I'm a planet! <laughs> oh, wow. Nice! Yeah, um, I was theorizing that the storm calmed down because Sailor Moon was channeling and invoking the legendary silver crystal power. I was like, well, as long as we're equally opposed forces, the storm should be calming down. Even if the Black Moon Kingdom and Black Lady have totally screwed up the future. I mean, how many Black Crystals do we want to shove into the planet? Yeah, I'm like, even if they win this battle, it's kind of pointless. Because there's not going to be a planet viable unless we do that whole 
Deus Ex Machina of, oh, the crystal cured everything, and look at all the people, oh, they're not dead anymore. Well, it's either going to have to be a Deus Machina of the crystal, or it's going to have to be a Deus Machina of time travel, that we win, and then we have a chance to go back in time and stop it before it all happens. Ah, yes, that thing. Oh, if you pay attention to a lot of time theory, you realize that, oh, I can change the past, but it just creates a splinter of future where everything's fixed, and I still have to go back to the time I was in. <laughs> Unless I happen to have a sliding machine, then I can slide over to that nice dimension. Though, do, since I'm sliding over, is there, now, now do I have to deal with my copy of me, and... Yeah. Damn you, time travel. I, I could definitely do without time travel in almost every single story ever. Well, unless it's done well, like Back to the Future. Well, Back to the Future, you know, kind of needed time travel to work well because it was a central focus. But when it gets tacked onto another story, you start going, ah, canon problems. Yes, but it's like, oh, yes, let's have Tuxedo Mask attack Sailor Moon again while he's under the control of evil influence. Yeah, they sure do love to beat her up. <laughs> and they also love to have Tuxedo Mask do it. The guy gets kidnapped more than any girl in the series. <laughs> and every single time he is kidnapped, he is brainwashed and turned evil. You know, that really sucks considering he's Earth's guardian. You know, if he was a girl, he'd be a sailor scout. But since only girls are scouts, and he's male, then the guardian of Earth is a guy and the guardian of Earth is a wimp. <laughs> uh, well, at least the brainwashing thing never really happened to Mokuba. And Mokuba also never really got turned evil. But it's, it's just a good way to mess with Sailor Moon and, you know, take away her strength. Because the power of the legendary Silver Crystal is the power of her heart. If her heart is hurting because she's having to fight her beloved, then you've weakened the power of the crystal. Which is probably why every single villain comes up with the same plan. <laughs> Sick tuxedo mask on her. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Except that so far, you know, here on the second kidnapping, both times it's been because the other woman wanted Tuxedo Mask. Beryl wanted Endymion, Chibiusa has this whole Electra complex going on, like, mm, yeah. That's an interesting thing. I wonder if this will continue to be a trend. I wonder how much more of the Sailor Moon manga they're going to turn into a series with this one. I don't know. I mean, it's been so popular so far. I would think they'd just keep going. It would be really interesting if we made it all the way to the end with the Sailor Starlights, because I still get confused there. <laughs> because I originally thought they were guys who gender swapped into girls, and then I read somewhere else that only girls can be Sailor Scouts, so they're actually girls. They just dress like guys, kind of like Uranus. I'm like, I don't know what's going on in Sailor Cosmos and Sailor Galaxia and Chibi Chibi. It's all just confusing. <laughs> with, a lame, with a name like Chibi Chibi, I can see why. <laughs> uh, it's like, who are you again? Okay. How about you? Okay. So what's going on in the story again? I don't get it. <laughs> Well, at least things seem to be pretty clear right now. Good guy turned evil, good guy has an electric complex, and is using a um, future father to attack f future mother on Father's Day. Or the day before Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and let's not forget that if you manage to kill your own mother, then shouldn't you, like, have never been born? Yeah, that's a flaw I forgot. <laughs> Though, once again, based on the multi-universe thing, it actually wouldn't affect you. But moving on. Still. You would think you would take that into consideration. Especially with them going with the whole, oh, you can't be in the same proximity with your future self kind of theory. And, you know, the power of the crystal of the past only works in the past, and the power of the crystal in the future only works in the future. Which makes me wonder, why is it so dangerous to have the two crystals together if only one is functioning? And if only members of the royal family can use it, why is it so dangerous that Prince Diamond is going to touch the two of them together? I mean, it makes sense that it, it could be dangerous for Black Lady to do it, because she's still technically a member of the royal family. But only one of the crystals should be functional in this time period. So putting two of them together, one active, one inactive, shouldn't destroy the whole world. But apparently it's going to, because Diamond is going to take us all down with him, because he's finally woken up, and so he's not going to trust anyone. And he's going to kill everyone with the power of the Silver Crystal, because it's obviously stronger than the Malefic Black Crystal. Therefore, we'll just kill everyone and be done with it, because we can never win. So, you know, final strike. 
take everyone with you. Wow, that was a mouthful there, because I was like, I was going to interrupt, but I'm just going to stay here quiet while you continue to go on with that. And here's my theory why it's bad for them to touch. Kind of like the whole being in the same proximity with your future self in some old versions of how time travel worked. If you touched your future self, you would negate yourself from time. So I'm thinking that's how this will work. It will, quote unquote, destroy the world because it will never have existed. So by it touching its future self, it will erase itself from history, I'm thinking. Yeah, but I want to say that wouldn't Chibiusa have accidentally touched the two of them together because she stole it when they were still back in the past and she had the crystal of the future at that time. You tell me she didn't accidentally ever touch them together? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think this story is that cohesive. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Say I like the episodes. It's ramping up nicely. We're now getting into the part of the arc where it's the final battle of this arc. At least that's what I'm perceiving right now. I don't actually know. You may know because you, you've read most of the manga. <laughs> um, All of the manga, including the two volumes of Sailor V, which actually, from what I understand, had its own separate series, and the two volumes of Sailor Moon short stories. So I like where it's going, and I can't wait to see more. Pretty enjoyable so far. Yeah, if it wasn't for this whole Electra complex, I would enjoy this arc a lot more. But right now I'm just like, Oh, can we just day ex machina our way out of this and get on to the arc with Helios? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Silly Moon Crystal episodes 23 and 24. Thanks for listening. Enjoy Lux's art? You can find more of it on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Want to keep up to date with our podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like our channel? Please leave a friendly comment and consider subscribing. Really like Lux's art? You can have some of your own. He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.